Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, my buddy Simon and I take out two particularly rugged cameras for a comparative review in New York City. On the one hand, we have the Konica Genba Kantoko, which Bellamy Hunt had recently promoted in our episode of Talking Cameras, and which was originally designed for construction foremen or supervisors at Japanese construction sites. On the other hand, we have a camera designed originally for divers and the operation in the deep blue sea, including gloves and a diving mask, and that is the Nikon Nikonos 5. Both cameras have generated quite a cult following by now as rugged point and shoot cameras. And as a case in point, during our photo walk um, in Williamsburg, we were actually um, passed by by a young woman carrying the exact same Nikonos 5 camera, except um, she had the one in the more popular orange color. And um, if you look up the camera on Instagram, you get um, all sorts of images of, of especially surfers using it to um, capture some really nice surfing impressions and taking it out to sea, because of course that's, it's well suited for that purpose as well. And in a similar fashion, the Konica Genba Kantoku has um, yeah, quite a following as well as a flashy, rugged accessory. Um, there are also some really nice colors of it, like an orange, for instance, and so on, um, kind of fitting that construction site theme. And it's the kind of camera that you can just drop and that is dust proof, waterproof, and so on as well. Um, so. We wanted to get a better understanding of this trend and to take these cameras out for a photo walk in the pretty rugged and cold um, early December in New York with all sorts of wind, um, um, pretty um, yeah, harsh and cold weather. And also if we took it out on a boat, we wanted it to be protected from kind of the, um, the, the water and everything in the um, air. So we shot one roll of Cinestill 400D with the Nikonos and or in the Nikonos and one uh, roll of Kodak Gold 200 and another one of Ilford FP4 with the Konica. And of course, we can't wait to share the results with you and take a closer look at these two cameras. The Konica Genba Kantoko is a rugged 35mm camera first released in 1988 to the Japanese market. As briefly touched on before, it was directed at um, construction workers, especially site supervisors or foremen, who needed a small portable camera to take images at construction sites and uh, therefore the camera is of course water, dust and sandproof and also shock resistant. Um, the camera came in all sorts of different versions. For our purposes here, let's look at the one that we have, and that is a 35 um, WB, the 35 millimeter version of a camera that was released in 1994. Um, and it's good to know that there were also um, 28 millimeter um, versions of these cameras. So as the name suggests, ours has a 20, uh, 35 millimeter focal length. 
Um, it comes with an autofocus and a minimum focusing distance of around 0.8 meters and shutter speeds ranging between um, one fourth of a second to one 280th of a second. And now what is really interesting is that the maximum aperture is always um, the same. Um, here you have a fixed maximum aperture of f 3.5 so there's no possibility to stop down the aperture which if you start to think of it of course reduces the complexity so there are no aperture blades that could potentially get any kind of dust or dirt into them or if you drop the camera of course the most delicate part of a lens would be not just the glass but also the aperture plates um, potentially um, yeah moving against each other or causing any kind of other problem and not opening and closing properly afterwards and that complexity is completely taken in a way by just saying okay the, the lens is always being shot wide open at f 3.5 and that's it the downside of that is that you should of course take into consideration the lighting the light situation when choosing your film if you are actually shooting at a construction site i think you're good to go with an iso 400 um, film if you are kind of inside and um, yeah, have a darker situation, so to speak. You can always rely on the camera because it also has a built-in flash that goes off wherever needed um, and protects you from underexposing the film like that. Um, and it's also a nice fill flash, by the way, when you're out and about um, shooting in uh, dawn situations or so. Um, but if you are using it as a point and shoot alternative and you have a really sunny, bright day, then of course it is essential to match your film stock to the capabilities of the camera and it simply maxes out at the one um, 280s of a second um, shutter speed. Um, there are some versions with different shutter, shutter speeds, um, but that should be taken into consideration. It's not a particularly fast shutter speed and uh, therefore please choose your film wisely in order to avoid overexposure. Um, the battery is run by a 2CR5 um, battery that uh, basically drives the automatic film advance, the electronic shutter, and also the LCD. And as Simon told me, the battery basically lasts forever. The display shows the film counter, battery level, flash mode, self timer, and um, when you're focusing to infinity. So you can change the flash setting by pressing the mode button here and going through on, off, and auto mode. And a small window on the back reminds you of which film you loaded, which is also convenient. And, and in contrast to the Nikonos, the Konica only offers that restricted aperture priority mode with a fixed uh, yeah, f3.5 and then selecting the fitting um, or the most fitting shutter speed. The Nikonos 5, in contrast, is a, also a rugged, waterproof 35mm um, camera, but this one was originally directed at divers at to really take underwater images. And the entire camera is optimized for that. So the Nikonos 5 um, was released in April 1984, and it comes with an excellent interchangeable, with the excellent interchangeable Nikkor lenses, specifically designed for this camera. And for our purposes in our review, we used a 35 millimeter lens, which features knob controls for the aperture and the focusing on each side that are really designed to be used with um, diving gloves and are really nice in the operation with or without gla gloves. In our case, of course, using it here in a pretty cold, um, wintry New York, it was nice to be able to use it with gloves as well. So it actually came in handy in a completely different purpose here as well. Um, the, maximum the maximum aperture of this particular 35mm lens is um, f2.5 and the ap electronic aperture priority auto exposure mode, um, the focal plane shutter um, works steplessly um, across the entire shutter speeds from 1 30th of a second to 1 1 1,000th of a second. And in the electronic manual mode, it lets you choose um, in increments and then there's also a mechanical fallback of 1 90th of a second. The large viewfinder was designed for use with a diving mask and as a result it can also be used um, w very well with glasses which is nice if you are in the market for such a camera and have glasses. Um, inside the viewfinder um, it features a warning for over and under exposure as well as a selected shutter speed in the automatic mode and the suggested shutter speed in the manual mode. And the ISO for the camera can be set um, between 25 and 1600. And a camera like this is obviously, um, yeah, obviously comes with some um, special lock functions. So there is one for the film back hinge and a convenient shutter lock. 
And interestingly, the camera comes with the same um, shutter as the famous Nikon F3 and even the same super smooth um, advanced film advance lever as the F3, albeit modified for underwater use. The camera features various um, O-rings to keep the water out in case you would actually take the camera underwater or yeah, get it contaminated with dust or um, sand or something similar. Um, it is recommended to wash it um, with fresh water and afterwards grease the O-rings again. And there's also um, yeah, professional Nikon um, O-ring grease available um, until today that you can purchase to, to do that. And it's highly recommended to do that in order to keep the camera completely tight and sealed from any kind of contaminants. Historically, and I wanted to briefly touch on that, the system was born as the Calypso Fort in 1959 already and was produced by the French camera manufacturer Atoms and co-developed by the legendary French diver and um, explorer Jacques Cousteau, as well as the Belgian inventor Jean de Wouters. So really at a time when we also saw the introduction of a lot of dive watches, also often developed together with professional divers with their special needs. And here we have the same story kind of applied to um, cameras with the Nikonos um, as a camera that was originally de developed um, here in France, um, similar to certain dive watches um, that were also created for the French Navy, for instance. And here, how does Nikon come in? Um, they basically, in 1962, Nikon acquired the exclusive production and distribution rights outside of France and Europe and renamed the camera to Nikonos. And the last iteration um, is um, called the Nikonos RS. So the, of course the camera saw several iterations since then and the Nikonos 5 is a really nice one but the last one is the Nikonos RS from 1992 which was really a full reflex with all the bells and whistles you can imagine. But the Nikonos 5 that we have here is really a popular one um, and also the two or the, the couple of several colors that are available are really really nice and personally I really like the one that Simon has here with that beautiful green color.
So what about the optical performance, the handling and our personal impressions? The 35mm lens on the Nikon S was simply fantastic and really blew me away in terms of optical performance. So you get high resolution, a great overall sharpness, nice color rendering and hardly any vignetting or fall off. Um, so I can really see why this camera and these lenses are on this camera are so popular and why it would probably also perform well in underwater situations where you of course have all sorts of things floating in front of the lens and you still want to get high resolution images um, and yeah it's definitely well suited for taking it out for um, a photo walk as well and perform well here. The Genba Kantoko in contrast is of course not quite living up to the Nikonos in terms of optical performance um, precisely because it, it, they were made some compromises so you do see um, that yeah it of course always shoots wide open and the overall sharpness is a little bit affected by that you also see a little bit of fall off um, in terms of corner sharpness you see some vignetting um, so it's not that great but you still get solid results I would say and to be fair this camera of course was not created to create fantastic images but primarily to document construction sites in an appropriate fashion and um, to be a camera that can simply fall off a building or be dropped or be thrown into the dust and sand and still be you be working perfectly fine afterwards and this is why it's a little bit of an apple and oranges comparison here um, what we also really enjoyed looking back at the Nikon is the unusual um, aperture and focusing mechanism and it really came in handy being used with gloves in the in a wintry setting. Um, I didn't expect that at all but it was really appreciative of having that and it was also a lot of fun using the foc focusing mechanism and seeing um, kind of with the distance scale getting an indication of what will be in focus with the selected um, with a selected um, aperture. So really, really nice um, setup that works super fast and that is really well suited for, for these kinds of street shots. And I also enjoyed kind of the, the shutter lock function and these kind of elements all very handy, very intuitive and a really nice and fast camera. Uh, the only thing is in terms of weight, the Nikonos is um, pretty heavy because of its well-built metal um, solid construction. It is of course, uh, the body was constructed to sustain high pressure underwater being an underwater camera and this uh, you can really feel and also in terms of size it cannot be easily pocketed and put into a coat pocket for instance and um, yeah in, in, in comparison the Konica Genbakantu core feels even more robust and you don't hesitate at all um, throwing it into a backpack or putting it somewhere on the floor and it can certainly also um, take a hit or excuse a drop so in my opinion it's well suited also for smaller children um, who want to explore um, a camera and take their first um, um, shots you can basically hand that camera to them and they have a really nice maybe even colorful flashy toy and uh, take a couple of real images expose some real film without you having to worry about them dropping the camera and, and destroying it so a lot can happen to this camera before it breaks down um, in contrast to the Nikonos, it is also super light, which is interesting because here the material is different and it is actually surprising to lift it up and have this really robust design and feel like you can throw it everywhere and still it's not that heavy. Um, in terms of handling, the only thing that was a little bit annoying is that the shutter only goes off if it finds focus and um, correct exposure. You can kind of force it to expose the frame anyways, um, kind of override the um, um, the, the wrong exposure or the prevention of, of taking that shot um, but typically you need to find focus and correct exposure um, but once you do it works perfectly fine and in our use case it also worked pretty well um, but of course you need to take the maximum aperture here into consideration and that you should actually actually focus on what you want to focus on with the autofocus precisely because you have a little bit of a especially with the 35 millimeter a little bit of a bokeh still 
Um, what um, is also nice is that the camera can be pocketed in comparison to the Nikon OS. Um, and what I personally like the most is the built-in flash, which um, goes off pretty easily um, if you set it to on. Um, so even in slightly darker situations, you immediately have that fill flash, um, at least when you use, when using slower film as we did. And personally, I really, really like the look of that, um, kind of that front um, flash um, at your subject. And um, especially when shooting at dusk or dawn, um, it's completely sufficient to, use, to shoot with an ISO 200 or ISO 400 film. And then, um, yeah, the flash comes in really handy and creates this really nice and special look. So overall, two very different and very interesting cameras and uh, definitely uh, well suited as point and shoot cameras. And I can see why the community is moving in that direction. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Analog Insights and our comparative review of the Nikonos 5 and the Konica Genba Kanto Core. Two very different but still similar rugged 35mm cameras, both water, sand and dust proof and one even um, really, really underwater proof in terms of high underwater pressure. Um, if you like this video, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.